Well, hello, friends. It's the end of another month, so obviously it's time for another Serenity OS update. But before we begin, let me tell you about my Patreon real quick. So the Serenity operating system and all of my content about it is always going to be free and open source. But if you would like to support my work and maybe even one day make it possible for me to do this full time, then do check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description below. And as always, a huge, huge thank you to those of you who are already my supporters. You guys rock. So thank you. All right. So let's talk about what's new in Serenity or what's been up in the month of August. Um, other than the Swedish weather, the hot, hot thing uh, in August is that we got up and running on real hardware, um, not just in QEMU anymore. So stick around for a demo coming later in this video. But first, let me show you some stuff I can do here in the comfort of my emulator. So the first thing I'll show you is, oops, um, is that now the terminal has scroll back. So we can mouse wheel up and down and stuff, which is very, very handy. And uh, the moment I got it, I realized that uh, life was terrible before and it's better now. So that's really good. And then um, somewhere where we did a lot of work this month was the system monitor, uh, which used to be called the process manager, but we, we named it the system monitor because it does so much more than process management now. Um, so here's a new pane down here, or a new tab rather. Uh, it shows the open files in the selected process. Super handy. And then up here we have a whole bunch of new tabs. Here's the file system tab. Shows up all the shows all the mounted file systems. Um, and this mechanism here that it lets us draw some arbitrary thing as a table cell, also new. We can draw a progress bar for the amount of space used. Um, the table columns now automatically slice themselves to fit the content. Very, very handy as well. It saves us a bunch of trouble. And then here's a PCI device list. Um, this is implemented by enumerating the whole PCI bus and then looking up the um, the different PCI cards in the PCI IDs database, which we now uh, parse. So thank you, Conrad, for working on this. Very, very useful stuff. Here's a devices tab uh, made by Sergey, which shows us all of the available kernel devices. So it's a very nice way to, to see all of the devices, we, all the devices we have available in the kernel. Um, and then um, the network tab, where we can see our network interfaces. So in QEMU right now, I have a loopback and a Intel E1000 network adapter. Um, and down here, we would see sockets, like live sockets, like uh, TCP sockets, for instance. So let me bring up an IRC client. And you can see that there's a TCP socket connecting to the Freenode network. And I would hope that it would do something interesting. Maybe it didn't work. Maybe I have to start another IRC client. Sometimes things don't work. And here we go. Connection established. And hopefully we would see some bytes coming in and out here. As we make progress on the connection, you can see that bytes in and bytes out changes. Pretty cool. Um, but let's close that. OK. Um, what else? So uh, this month we got a calculator, courtesy of Sergey as well. 1, 2, plus 3 is equal to 15. Cool, right? <laughs> Every desktop OS needs a calculator, so thank you very much for adding that too. Um, wouldn't be right without it. And then here is another project I started this month, which is a Chan Viewer. It's a 4chan client, um, which I kind of really just wanted something that would let me test uh, both JSON and HTTP libraries in the system. And this just seemed like a perfect fit because 4chan has a um, HTTP, not HTTPS, JSON API. Um, so right now you can just, you know, pick a different pick between the different boards, and you can view the list of threads. So we got international. I see here's this uh, Swedish thread, uh, cat edition. Sounds very interesting, but I don't have time to read that right now. So <clears throat> some other time. Okay, and then let me show you something else kind of neat. So what do we have here? We have, I guess we have the um, launcher app. So let's, let's see what PID he is. It's PID 15. Let me bring up the inspector. 
on page 15. So Inspector is a new app that connects to um, an RPC service and all running GUI apps or all running apps with event loops. Um, and it lets you introspect the um, object graph in this running program. So you can see all of these. Um, so we have a window here, it's the window that these buttons are in, and then there's a widget, this vertical layout widget, and then uh, one G button for each of these buttons here. So you can see the top one is Chan Viewer. Indeed, Chan Viewer is the tooltip. And then comes text editor. When we click here, we see uh, that this is indeed the text editor. Um, so this is still very early, but uh, you can tell that this mechanism is obviously um, going to be very useful for implementing all kinds of remote procedure call type stuff. And hopefully, I don't even know what we're going to build with this. We're, we're going to build something cool. Now let me bring up the text editor. Let me open a big file. So here's the Serenity readme. Uh, as you can see now, uh, we have line wrapping which is a very, very useful feature for uh, dealing with large files, because otherwise, without line wrapping, it sucks opening wide files. And we also have a search function in the text editor now. So let's search for sum. Uh, and we can search next, next, previous, previous. You know, it works as you would expect. Uh, but it's still very cool. And then up here in the menu, you can see the line wrapping can be turned off. And you'll also notice the new menu style, which um, got kind of an overhaul this month. It's a um, new style kind of inspired by the first release of Visual Studio.net, uh, which I think it turned out really, really sweet. Um, I'm very happy with this so far, although it still needs some tweaking, but I like it. I like having icons in the menus. It looks very, very tasteful, I think. Um, another thing in menus is nested menus, also new. So now we can have a font menu here inside the view menu. Um, very cool. Change the font and look at that. And then finally in the text editor, also if we, uh, if you'd like none of these same things, um, you'll notice if I change the document, we get a little asterisk here. And that of course means the document has been modified. So if we try to close it, it will say, hey, 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 it's been modified. Do you really want to quit without saving? And I'll say, okay, yeah, I'll quit. And then I guess those were the GUI things I wanted to show you. Uh, then there's been a lot of awesome stuff in the kernel this month, a lot of uh, work on networking. Um, that stuff like routing and ARP uh, is getting improvements. Uh, so thank you, Conrad, for working on that. We got mount and unmount support this month. Thank you, Jesse. And we got um, efficient JSON serialization, which makes the um, slash proc file system not super inefficient at serializing the JSON. So it's really awesome work by Sergey. And uh, there's just countless things happening in the kernel. It's just so hard to show them in a video. Um, but yeah, so, oh yeah. And there's a, there's a driver now for uh, the Realtek 8139 card that Conrad did as well. So I wanna mention that because it's really cool. It's the network, the network card. <laughs> So I mentioned earlier that we are up and running on real hardware, uh, but since I was not the first person to get it running on a real machine, I'm just gonna let the guy who did the work also give you the first demo. So let me pass it over to Conrad Pankoff. Well, hello friends. This is a video that I am making for Andreas for his monthly update. Here is Serenity booting on real hardware. I've got a serial console over here, which will show me all the debug messages. And here we have our regular screen, which will display the GUI. Let's watch this boot. This is not a very new build. Uh, this is probably a week and a half old at this point. I am planning to update things, but this should still show some interesting things. So. Here we're using Grub to actually boot the operating system because Serenity does not have its own bootloader. So I will start this. There's some kernel options that you can supply which turn on the serial debugging, which is how we will see all of the internal stuff happening over there. So let's go. As we can see, there's some messages starting to come out. And the system has now booted. As you can see, this monitor is uh, 
not very good at auto detecting its settings at startup, so I have to press a button. But everything seems to work. So you can see that there are some messages scrolling by on the screen at the moment, every now and then. Of course they stopped as soon as I mentioned them. Those are actually network packets coming into the machine and we can view them, or we can view the fact that they exist, we can't see their content, but we can see that there are packets coming in by looking at this line in the system monitor. Uh, currently, packets that are sent out by the system are not received by anything, probably because I have something wrong with my driver, but it does receive them successfully. So let's watch that happen. I'm going to run up ping, which is basically the lowest level thing that you can do to send a packet to somewhere else on the network. And that should increment this counter here. As you can, it's already going up just from stray data on the network. So I'll run our ping, and there we go. The packet counter is going up. So that's real hardware doing stuff. This is very close to actually communicating with the outside world. Well, how cool was that, right? We are definitely moving forward here. So this was everything that I had to show you guys today. So thanks for tuning in and for keeping up to date with the project. Uh, if you ever want to chat, you'll find us in Serenity OS on the Freenode IRC network. Um, but before we leave, I just want to say thank you to everyone who contributed this month, whether it was through code or bug reports or hanging out on IRC or uh, commenting on YouTube or whatever, whatever way that you contributed uh, thank you. It's, it's been a good, great, great month. Uh, and we hit 4,000 commits this month. I hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Um, things are just moving forward at a, at a very nice pace, and it's really exciting. So thank you, everyone, for being part of this. And I will see you next time.